you have just clicked on one of the craziest gang stories on YouTube. NLMB had one of the biggest wars on the east side of Chicago starting in 2007 and still going on today. This east side gang is allegedly responsible for over 50 murders throughout Chicago, but they have lost many of their members too with back and forth unsolved murders. This is truly a crazy Chicago gang story. In LMB are two sets that clicked up. No Limit, short for NL, are Renegade Black P Stones, while Muskegon Boys, MB, are Renegade GDs. These guys clicked up back in the 2000s to have some stronger manpower after some problems kicked off on the block. And LMB is short for No Limit Muskegon Boys and also Never Leave My Brothers. Their territory is mainly around 78th and 79th in Essex. They are allied with Front Street, Old Block, 600, and Money Mafia. Their ops include pretty much the whole east side, including Lakeside, Gyro City, Black Mob, Pocket Town, EBC, MTG, 079, Death Row, and No Limit 0803. The beef all started back in 2007 when a guy of the name of Leon Henry got shot at the gas station, aka Chico, which was a well-loved NLMB member. Plus, G Herbal shouts him out in a lot of his songs. At around 4 a.m. on December 5th, 2007, a witness says he was driving eastbound on 79th Street near Cranon Avenue when he observed an argument between some men and women in front of a cashier's booth at a gas station. He then drove around the block to see if they were okay, but because they were arguing when he came back around, he then decided to circle the block again. But when Harris came back to turn in Creighton Avenue, he saw two women and a man walk north side on a sidewalk about a half a block away from him. Meanwhile, the car behind him, which was a black SUV Kia, pulled up on his bumper and flashing his lights. He then pulled over to let the black SUV Kia pass. Then suddenly the car stopped about four car lengths ahead of him. Right in the middle of the street, a passenger jumped out and ran behind the back of the car toward the three individuals on the sidewalk. He raised his arm and started shooting in their direction. The woman ran north screaming into a yard and Leon Henry aka Chico ran back toward 79th Street. The driver then jumped out and began chasing and shooting Leon. The two shooters then chased Leon toward 79th Street into a lot next to the building behind the gas station, at which the witness lost sight of Leon and where he would lose his life at. The guy that allegedly killed Leon Hurst, aka Chico, was a guy named Dre from No Limit 803 and is now serving 52 years for the murder of Chico, with the murder of Chico sparked off a whole war on the east side of Chicago and left NLMB no choice but to get get back for their brother. But one of the first people that NLMB allegedly killed was from Lakeside and NLMB beefed hard with Lakeside over territory on the east side. So around June 18th, 2008, at about 7.45 p.m., Larry Pickles, aka Nutty, from Lakeside, was shot while sitting on a porch at 7815 South Marquette Avenue. He was later pronounced dead, and allegedly the gang that did this was NLMB. But all of this killing would catch up to NLMB, because this next person was one of the most respected people in NLMB, and plus he was known to put in a lot of work. Devious Johnson, aka Vito, from NLMB, had allegedly just shot at one of his ops while he was with his family, and this was a big gang law in Chicago, which not to do, which currently gangs in Chicago don't really follow rules of today. But on April 27th, 2009, a guy of the name of Trinity Walton, aka Boo from the Black Mob said, allegedly pulled up on Devious Johnson at about 1.20 a.m. while he was standing on the sidewalk and shot him right in the chest on the 7500 block of South Essex, which was right around NLMB's territory. Devious Johnson, aka Vito, was pronounced dead at 2.18 a.m. He was 21 years of age. Plus, Black Mob member Boo is currently serving 60 years for the murder of Vito. Black Mob and No Limit were linked and friendly for a long time, just like all the stones around there. That allegedly changed after a personal dispute between Vito and a guy from Maniac said. The dispute happened when Vito was trapping in a black mob's territory without paying any tax or showing a proper respect. Allegedly, Vito got violated for it and was convinced by Hell Row, a guy from around the way, he needed to go shoot the dude for it. But the mistake that Vito made is that he shot at the dude while he was with his family. Luckily, no one got killed in the shooting. And allegedly, the black mob dudes wasn't having that on the block. 
so they shot him in the chest. This murder would strike a heated beef between NLMB and Black Mob over the years, and would be another gang that NLMB would have to watch out on the east side for. But about three months later, NLMB would lose another member. July 2nd, 2009, police responded to a call of shots fired around 10 p.m. near 79th Street and Yates Avenue. The victim was identified as James Robinson, aka Chico from NLMB. But only about three months later, NLMB would get get back for Chico because allegedly they would catch another Lakeside member on October 15, 2009. A 23-year-old man was found shot on the southeast side street in the early mornings. Dante Williams, aka Dickhead from Lakeside, was found in the 8100 block of Manistee Avenue at about 3.20 a.m. He was pronounced dead at 4.47 a.m. This next loss would be another big loss for NLMB. Officers responded at about 9.35 p.m. to a call of a person shot in the 2900 block of East 79th Street. And when they arrived, officers found Faison Robinson, aka G. Faison from NLMB. He was found on the 2900 block of East 79th Street. And this is the guy that G. Herbo shouts out in a lot of his songs. He even named the Nike Air Force Ones that he wears all the time after G. Faison. But as things started to die down throughout the second half of 2010. On June 3rd, 2011, NLMB will lose another member. Rondo Cummins, aka Boss Blitz, was shot at around 2.09 a.m. on the 6800 block of South Crandon Avenue. Witnesses told police they heard an argument and saw a silver car flee northbound from the area at the time of the shooting. Rondo Cummins, aka Boss Blitz, was dead at the scene. But on June 5th, 2011, and LMB would get get back for Vito because they would catch a black mob member on June 5th, 2011. Hakeem Graham, 20 years of age, was shot multiple times in the 2400 block of East 75th Street. He was pronounced dead at 11.20 a.m and he was a well-loved black mob member. Around this time, things was getting super hot and beef was getting real. And LMB was nearly beefing with the whole east side and was getting in different shootouts every other day. But on February 19th, 2012, and LMB would take a big loss because they would lose two people in the same day. Plus, Lil Herb was right there and allegedly, he was even shot in his foot. Seven people were injured in a shooting near a liquor store in the 2500 block of East 79th Street. It was on a cold Sunday night. Jamal Hurst, aka NLMB Rock, 19 years of age, and Gregory Glency, aka NLMB Alamo, were both shot in the chest. Hurst, aka Rock, was found inside the store. Glency, aka Alamo, was found outside the store. Police say Glency was an innocent victim. He had just celebrated his mother's 80th birthday that Saturday, and he left behind four children and seven grandchildren. The other five victims made it out alive, including G Herbo. After these murders, an LMB was on high alert and didn't take any more losses until October 29th, 2012. Carlos Alexander, aka an LMB Big Los, was walking outside of his home at about 1.30 a.m. when he was approached by two unknown offenders who then opened fire on him before fleeing the scene on foot. This was a big loss for an LMB, and he was one of the OGs too. But this next event would bring even more tension between an LMB and Lakeside because an LMB Cairo would get caught lacking in a McDonald's by a couple KTS members. The video is known because of KTS Dre, KTS Vaughn, Pasto, and Don Don went to McDonald's in Turretown and caught an LMB Cairo and Kobe lacking. In a video, KTS Dre tells Cairo to say F Rock, who just died less than a year before this event. Then KTS Dre went to punch Cairo in the face, breaking his jaw. After leaving the McDonald's, shots rang out, and allegedly one of the KTS members got hit, but no one was killed from this event, except for when they would catch a Lakeside member less than a month after this video. November 10th, 2012, just before 1 p.m., Anthony begs by aka Bud, was found shot in the South Shore neighborhood, right in the 7400 block of South Shore Drive. He was a Lakeside member that was close to KTS. He was even in one of their videos on YouTube. With the tension growing higher and higher, an LMB would catch another Lakeside member. April 4th, 2013, D'Angelo Simmons, aka Lakeside Lolo, was standing in the 800 block of South Manistee when a gunman walked up on him and shot him. He was pronounced dead at 7.04 p.m. Around this time too, G Herbal was becoming famous on the music tip and it was just bringing more and more attention to NLMB. So the ops lined up to kill another well-loved NLMB member. June 26, 2013, Cortez Bailey, aka Simo, was standing in the 
7500 block of Southeast Boulevard. When a gunman walked up on him and shot him repeatedly in the chest, Seymour was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital where he was pronounced dead at 12.22 p.m. Seymour was a well-loved NLMB member and G Herbal shouts him out a lot. Motherfuckers been always fighting them niggas, but in that So this shit been going on this back in the day? Yeah. This on, ain't no so on. but you two think it's new. Yeah. They think it's new. Oh. They think it's new. It's not getting exposure due to yeah. motherfuckers being on and shit. You can be like, right. a motherfucker been fighting them since elementary school. Oh, and he did a joke walk on the floor. That's where it's funny at. Black mob killer. The niggas thundercats. Yeah, they brave pussies. First they toughed them hammers up, then they the same pussies. But only three days later, on June 29th, 2013, Allegedly, NLMB will catch another black mob member. A 24-year-old man was shot to death in South Shore that Sunday afternoon. He was seeking guidance from a pastor before he was killed. Jordan Jefferson from the black mob set was shot in the head in the 2400 block of East 75th Street at about 3.20 p.m. He was pronounced dead at the scene from multiple gunshot wounds. This next person is one of the most notable members in NLMB. July 3rd, 2013, Ray Ford Brown, aka Pistol P, was standing in the 2400 block of East 79th Street at about 6.50 p.m. When a male gunman got out of a green car and started firing, Pistol P was hit and taken to Northwestern University Medical Center where he later died. The shooter fled in an unknown direction and no one was ever in custody for this murder. G. Herbal even named his whole first project after Pistol P. From back in 2014, he called it Pistol P Project. These next couple of months, NLMB would lose a lot of members back to back because only on July 29th, 2013, Richie Pierce Jr., aka Richie Rich from NLMB, was shot only a couple blocks from his home at about 9 a.m. in the 7800 block of South Olds by Avenue. A male shooter emerged from an alley and opened fire on him. He was taken to South Shore Hospital where he was pronounced dead about 20 minutes later. This next NLMB member was another well-loved member, and he was really close to G Herbal too. August 10th, 2013, Jacoby Herring, aka Kobe, from NLMB was standing in the 2400 block of East 79th Street at around 4 a.m. when allegedly shooter shells from Black Mob walked up on him and shot him. He had been shot multiple times in the head and body. And LMB Kobe was dead on the scene. He's even the one that was in the video with Cairo in the McDonald's. But after taking all of these losses in a short span of time, and LMB knew they had to get get back for their homies. So only two days after Kobe died on August 12, 2013, Eric Chimps from Black Mob was standing outside in a South Shore parking lot and was gunned down just before 10 a.m. in the 7400 block of South Carfax Avenue. The shooters were in a light colored SUV and drove by and fired shots. And LMB was known for drive bys. Stop shooting our cars, man. And why young niggas, why young niggas, they kill shit, man. Drama. And this murder was get back for Kobe. Then they went for a Lakeside member. On November 23rd, 2013, Tyshawn Anderson, aka Pasto from Lakeside, which you'll hear G Herbal shot him out in a lot of his songs, had just been working on getting his life straightened out. But he was in a house in the 2700 block of East 80th Street, just around the corner from his house. He had been standing in the hallway when someone opened fire. Pasto was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and was pronounced dead at 11.50 p.m. It is speculated that Mad Max from NLMB killed Pasto, but who would ever know? This next death though was a pretty unusual situation. May 11th, 2014, a 15-year-old boy was killed by a friend who was shooting at people they had gotten into a dispute with in the West Pullman neighborhood on a Sunday. Vargan Holman, aka Gucci from NLMB, was the 15-year-old boy who was killed. Lil Gucci and his friend Washington were standing at 116th Street and Princeton Avenue when a white car drove up on Lil Gucci and then they began arguing with the car. Witnesses saw Lil Gucci point at the car and his friend Washington pulled out a gun from his pocket. He was standing behind Lil Gucci and then began shooting. As the car sped north on Princeton towards 115th Street, Lil Gucci and Washington started to run away, but then Lil Gucci collapsed collapsed as he ran. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Washington, who was his friend, was facing charges of aggravated discharge of a weapon, but who also got into beef around his town with NLMB 
with Ja Rule City. Around 2012 and 2015 was really the most active on the east side of Chicago for NLMB and they pretty much was beefing with the whole east side. December 17th, 2014, Jaquan Archie aka Ja Rule City Archie were standing in the 2100 block of East 79th Street when two people approached and one of them opened fire at about 2.20 p.m. 20 year old Ja Rule City Archie was dead at the scene. Allegedly they killed him because Ja Rule City Kobe kept running his mouth and he was there with Archie while he was changing his tire so they shot him both but Kobe lived. This next murder was a double homicide that involved two MTG 079 members. January 6, 2015, two young men were killed and a boy was wounded. That Tuesday afternoon, the young group of males walked into a convenience store in the 2200 block of East 79th Street and when they left the store, a gunman emerged from a nearby alley. 19 year old Joe Bennett was fatally shot in the head and 18 year old Corey Williams was fatally shot in the head too. These guys were well loved MTG 079 members but this next member on NLMB's hit list was known to put in work. He was from Lakeside and a part of KTS. He was even in the video when they caught an LMB Cairo in a McDonald's. June 23rd, 2015, Devon Davis, aka KTS Vaughn, was outside on the 7500 block of South Ellis Avenue at about 2.05 p.m. when someone walked up on him and shot him multiple times. He was pronounced dead at the scene and was only 21 at the age of his death. KTS Vaughn was known to put in work and was allegedly responsible for over four murders. Then it was July 6, 2015, Abiyomi, aka Bio from MTG 079, was standing outside of his house on the south side. When a rear vehicle pulled up, a male suspect got out and fired shots at him, leaving 16-year-old Bio dead and another teen wounded. Right in the 7900 block of South Mirror at about 5.30 p.m. But all of this killing would catch up to NLMB again and they would lose a well high ranking member. And this was only 11 days after Bio died, July 11th, 2015, at about 1.45 p.m. in the 7700 block of South Kingston. Marvin Kerr, AKA NLMB Cabo, and he was from Glow Gang too, was standing outside when a car drove up and shot multiple shots, hitting him in the back and the hip. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The guy that was allegedly on the hit was MTG Red Dot and the get away from hitting Capo to hit a one year old child that died in the stroller. His mother was waiting for the bus on 63rd and Ellis. This murder of NLMB Capo would hit NLMB real hard because Capo was a well respected member. He was also even a part of GBE too. These next three murders I'ma go through pretty quick because after these three murders NLMB would take out a high ranking black mob member. Earn Richardson aka NLMB Low Earn was shot and killed on September 6, 2015. He collapsed into the arms of a friend's mother shortly after being shot, only 15 years of age. Then it was Trayvon Smith, July 17, 2016. Trayvon Smith, aka Lil Gage from NLMB, had got shot in the head and was only 15 at the age of his death. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Then on September 4, 2016, Jamel Rollins, aka NLMB Lil Savage, was shot at only the age of 17. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. But then it was July 10, 2017. NLMB knew they had to take out this guy. He was allegedly responsible for the murder of Simo, Pistol P, and Richie Rich. 9.32 a.m. in the 8100 block of South Paulina, Cedron Doles, aka Shooter Shells from the Black Mob set, was approaching his car when three men with guns got out of a white vehicle and fired multiple shots, striking Shooter Shells multiple times. He was pronounced dead at the scene at 9.40 a.m. Taking this guy out was a big relief for NLMB. They knew that this guy was a high ranking member and he was probably the one doing the most hits for Black Mob. After Shooter Shells died, NLMB would take loss after loss over the years, with one of the most notable being Big Wet Em Up. He was the father of Morris Hurst, aka No Limit Wet Em Up. On March 30th, 2017, Jerry Jacobs was walking on the sidewalk at about 11.13 p.m. in the 7900 block of South Phillips. When four males got out of a dark colored car, he had a gunshot wound to the right side of his body and he took himself to the hospital. But unfortunately, he died at about 3.40 p.m. But then his son, Morris Hurst, got locked up for a quadruple homicide that happened the next day. But with him going to court, he beat all the charges. And LMB lost a lot more members throughout the years, 
But we're going to fast forward to September 3rd, 2018. Christopher Jackson, aka Mad Max from NLMB, was standing in the 7600 block of South Kingston when he was shot multiple times. Mad Max was allegedly responsible for over 10 murders. So this was truly a big hit for the ops. Plus, they would get Terrence Brooke G. Red on the 25th of that month too. He was also a well-loved NLMB member. But on July 2020, a KTS member would lose his life moments after leaving a jail. He was shot over 64 times. And allegedly, NLMB was involved in this murder too. Even though there was many more members that lost their life in NLMB, that was all we could get to today. This was truly a crazy story on NLMB. And this is a video that you will not find anywhere else. So make sure you like or dislike, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what y'all want to see next. And as always, stay blessed. Stay well. Yeah, yeah, I'm out.